everyone and welcome to another casual review. Today we will be talking about Pokemon Sword on the Nintendo Switch. I would call myself a a casual fan of Pokemon if that makes any sense. I have I want to say I think I've played every single generation of Pokemon at one point or another. The last time I played through a mainline generation game of Pokemon was the fourth generation and it was Pearl. And it, that was about mm, two years ago, I want to say. Now, I've played other Pokemon games since then. I, I actually did a casual review about Pokemon Snap. I want to say after the third generation is when I started to kind of fall off the Pokemon bandwagon. Like, I would still kind of keep up with the news. I would still play it. I was, I was pretty into, like, Pokemon Go, like most other people. But um, I didn't closely follow it to the point where I still know all of the Pokemon uh, names and types and stuff like that. I, I, I'm pretty casual when it comes to that kind of stuff um, after the third generation in particular. So yeah, I started getting the Pokemon itch just like just a little while ago and um, over the classifieds I got this game, Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Let's Go Eevee from somebody for, for pretty cheap. I think it was like 40 bucks. So it was like $20 each, really cheap. I would have preferred Pokemon Shield over Pokemon Sword because I typically like to go for the version that I, I figured not a lot of people would be into because I like having the like rarer Pokemon I guess and so normally for like Pokemon Fire Red and Leaf Green I'd go for Leaf Green and, and uh, I figured most people would want Pokemon Sword so I actually preferred Pokemon Shield but for 20 bucks, I'm not gonna complain. I'll, I'll play Pokemon Sword, sure. So this game actually, it stirred up a little bit of controversy when it was first announced because um, they said that we're not gonna have all of the Pokemon on there. They said it's too hard to have them all in there. And, and I think Pokemon Company is a big enough company they should be able to pull off that kind of stuff. But I, I, at the same time, I'm not really upset about it because, like I said, I, I'm more of a, a casual fan of the Pokemon series. I do feel bad for all the people that are really into Pokemon and, like, your favorite Pokemon just didn't make the cut. And, of course, they just announced, uh, like, their, their last version of the DLC or whatever where they are adding more Pokemon. I don't believe they still have all of the Pokemon in this generation or not. I don't think they do. So that does kind of suck for you uh, big Pokemon fans. I, I do feel bad for you guys, but at the same time, it, it doesn't affect me too much, so what do I care? No, I'm just kidding. I, I do feel bad, but it, it didn't it didn't affect me that much. So this time, uh, a typical Pokemon playthrough for me is I do my research ahead of time, I, I look through and I say, okay, uh, which Pokemon are available? Um, I want this guy, I want this guy, I want this guy. I'll make sure I, like, I have a well-round verse team, and I, I make sure they all have the strongest moves. I turn off battle animations, I turn on the fast speed, and I just make this ultimate team, and I don't really catch any other Pokemon besides the Pokemon that I plan out for my team ahead of time. And so, like, by the time I get to the Pokemon League, my Pokemon are all, like, 10 levels higher than the Challengers, and I just steamroll, and I, I beat the game, and then I write hags on my Pokemon's yearbook, and I turn the game off, and I, I never touch it again. And I'd say this kind of playthrough usually gives me about a 2 to a 3 out of 5 experience with the Pokemon games. And I, I, in my head, I just think, like, I want to be the strongest challenger. Of why wouldn't I want to be the, the best? You know, I want to be the best there ever was. As I was going into this, I kind of realized that, hey, it's not really fun to do that. I decided I wanted more of, like, an or organic approach to this game. Like, I kind of wanted to go in not doing any research ahead of time. I was thinking about the original, like, the anime series, because, like most people my age, you grew up trading the cards, playing the games, watching the anime. And, um, I wanted a more... Ash Ketchum approach to it. You know, I kind of wanted to uh, build up my team organically. I wanted to switch Pokemon in and out as I please. Um, I wanted to just enjoy my time and not really worry about min-maxing stats or anything like that. I didn't want to worry about nature or, or any like uh, having the perfect rounded team or anything. I just wanted to maybe see a Pokemon that looked new or interesting to me and uh, decide to add them to my team. I also thought it'd be fun to give nicknames to each of the Pokemon that I caught. And that was, that was actually, like, I want to say, like, a fourth of the fun to me. Because, like, I'd give these Pokemon, like, pop cultural names or, like, references to, uh, to past Pokemon games and things like that. Um, you know, if, if I caught a dog, I'd name it Ziggy. Just fun. Just, like, really have fun with it. 
Um, I think the funniest names that I gave Pokemon were just, sometimes I'd come across a Pokemon and just, I, I have no idea what to name you, like, I know nothing that looks like you, um, it, it's just, uh, I, I don't know, and so I'd give them, like, a human name, and I think those were the funniest cases, because, like, I remember catching a Wobbuffet, and the female version of Wobbuffet has, like, this, uh, pink lipstick on it, and I was just like, what do you name a female Wobbuffet? I have no idea, so I just ended up naming her Susan, and, um, I, th I think the human names are just hilarious to me for some reason. Maybe it's just, I, I just have a really dumb sense of humor. But just like, a uh, uh, Wobbuffet with pink lipstick named Susan going around. Actually, I'm gonna pull up my, my, uh, Pokemon box right now. I have my Switch right next to me. And, um, I'll, I'll tell you some of the, the names that, that, uh, tickle me pink. So, um, there was the two squirrel Pokemon in this version, and I named, uh, the, the first version Arthur and the big version Merlin after the Sword in the Stone. Uh, let's see, I got a Howlucha, and I named a Nacho Libre, naturally. Um, I got a Timber, and I named him Union Worker because he's part of a union building a construction. Um, I named a Trubbish, uh, a presidential name. I won't go any further into that. Um, let's see, named an Electric Good Boy, um, I named a, a Vulpix Fig, and it's like a, this famous, uh, fox on Instagram that Autumn likes to follow, I na named a Sizzlepeed Fruit Roll-Up, I named an, uh, Eldgoss, I named an Eldgoss Allergies, because it's like a, a cotton over its head, um, named the Doug Trio, 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 because in the anime, um, they, they like the Diglett and the Doug Trio sing a little song. I named a, a Shallow Slughorn after the professor in Harry Potter. Let's see. I called the Indeedy April because she rem kind of reminded me of April from Parks and Recreation. Just kind of fun little stuff like that. And I'll go over my main team in just a second. But um, I think that added a lot of fun just trying to come up with creative nicknames for these Pokemon because normally on a normal playthrough, I'm just building my team of six really strong Pokemon, not giving them names or anything like that. So it's, it's fun to slow down and just uh, really give um, some personification to your Pokemon. It really makes them feel like your own Pokemon. I do much prefer this encounter system compared to the older generations of Pokemon games where if you go in the grass, you see Pokemon actually like pop up and you, uh, if you run into them, that's when it starts to battle instead of random encounters. I was never, or I still am never really much of a fan of the random encounters in uh, JRPGs. Um, and then just being able to see them walk around in the wild, it makes it feel so much more real and lived in. Like, uh, and then you can just choose who you encounter, or if you're just trying to get back to the Pokemon Center, you can just avoid them. I don't know. I just really prefer this system, and I hope that future Pokemon games just stick to this kind of system. The catch rate on wild Pokemon seems really low. Like, I was, I remember I was in a cave, and I was trying to catch a Stunfisk. He was, he's like this flat fish that hides in the mud and he like look, kind of looks like a bear trap I guess and he just keeps on breaking out of these I uh, was using great balls at the time and um just ever since that stun fisk I feel like the catch rate is really really low like wild pokemon take maybe five or six balls each time even when they're like in their uh, HP is in the red zone I just thought it was like ridiculous and I, I did look it up later and they said if your pokemon is a higher level than the wild one the uh, catch rate goes up a little bit, but it still seemed like they were just breaking out like no other. You do encounter two legendary Pokemon in the base game, and um, I think the first one, they just give it to you, like, it, it counts as a Master Ball. And then the second legendary, I ended up using the one Master Ball that they give you, so I can't really attest to the catch rate on legendary Pokemon. I remember playing through Black and White, uh, and then uh, X and Y, and the catch rate for those legendary Pokemon seems a lot higher than what I'm, uh, than what I remember in the very first generation of Pokemon, the blue and red. Mewtwo is just like impossible, and you're just like dumping Ultra Balls on Mewtwo. Or um, another tough one I remember was the uh, shoot the, the 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 dragon Rayquaza, and just dumping Ultra Balls on this Rayquaza in Sapphire, and he just always breaks out. So. Um, I'm not, I can't attest to the legendary Pokemon, but the regular wild Pokemon are, are tough. They're, they're hard to catch, so it's kind of exciting when you do finally catch them, because you, you don't have to keep trying anymore. I ended up choosing Sobble out of the three Pokemon. I never, I didn't really like the starter designs for any of these Pokemon, to be honest. 
Um, Sable looked the cutest. He has his, his big eyes and he's all frowny. Um, I didn't like the final evolution of Sable or any of the, the starters for that matter. He, he turns into like this uh, hang gliding spy. I don't know. It, it was kind of dumb. Um, I, as far as the newer starters go, I like the uh, Decidueye, and maybe that's because I played, he was my main during uh, my Pokken playthrough, but I, I like creative designs like that. Uh, the, um, shoot, I can't remember the name of this Sobble Final Evolution, let me look it up real quick. Okay, so Inteleon, he's like a, a hang gliding spy lizard thing, I don't know, it didn't work, I didn't really like that. I didn't like the the soccer playing fire score bunny, and I didn't like the the grass drum guy either. They were, I thought they were all kind of stupid, but uh, yeah, I, I went with Sobble and I named him Crybaby because he looks like a crybaby, and um, I don't know. Like I said, all my names are are pretty stupid, but they're funny to me. I do wish um, when I was building my final team, I wish that I did have Pokemon Shield. There was two cases where this happened, and um, the first case is where I saw Ponita for the first time in this generation. And it looks like something from My Little Pony or, or something like that. I don't know, I, it was all rainbowy. I really wanted a Ponita. So when I was like, I Googled like, where do I catch Ponita? And they're like, Ponita's only available in Shield. I said, oh, okay, well, great, that sucks. Cause like, I don't know anyone who has Shield to trade with. And uh, then the second case is, <laughs> I found, um, I did like this, I was, I did a couple raids in the wild area all by myself, and I found a giant apple named Applin. I caught it, and I, I thought it was, I, I guess I was confusing it with the cherry one. I think his name is Cherub? And so I thought this was like a variation of Cherub, but no, it, it's, it, his name's Applin, and he's a grass and dragon type, and I just thought that was, that just tickled me pink. Like an apple, dragon, grass type, I don't know. The, the combination just worked for me, so I was using Applin for a long time. Like, I leveled Applin up to 45 or something, something crazy high like that, and then um, I was just like, geez, I wonder if this guy ever evolves, so I looked it up, and... Uh, yeah, you gotta give him an uh, you gotta give him a sour apple or something like that. Talk to this guy; he'll uh, give you something to evolve him. And I gave it to him, and he was like flying in the air. And he he evolved into shoot. Um, <laughs> sorry, I, it, it's hard because I nicknamed all my Pokemon, so this means that it is hard to remember the actual name of the the newer Pokemon. Uh, let's see. Okay, so his name is Flapple. And um, I, when I was doing research for this, uh, it turns out there's two variations that uh, your Applin can evolve into. And if you have the shield variation, he gives you the item to evolve him into this other apple form. And he looks like a, an apple pie dragon. And I just loved that design. And I was so excited to get him. But uh, if you have sh uh, sword, then he gives you an apple to turn or an item to turn him into a flapple. And I still use my Flapple in my main team. I still really love Flapple. He's he's probably my strongest Pokemon, I want to say. Um, but I, I really wish I got that other design. So I, I guess I'll go over my main team right now. Um, I, I already covered my Flapple, and I named him Jack because I, I caught the, the Apple in, and I turned to Autumn. I said, what should I name this Apple? And th the first thing that comes out of her mouth is Jack. So like Apple Jack. Okay, okay. So my, my Flapple was named Jack. Um, and then I talked about my Inteleon named Crybaby. Um, early on in the game, I was just kind of catching Pokemon and trying them out, using them. Um, I caught that uh, top, that Psychic Ground type um, top thingy. Let's see. Uh, that that Psychic top thingy. I, ca I can't remember the name off the top of my head. And I have him out on a job right now, so I can't look up his name. But um, I named him Dreidel because he's like a top. I don't know. Kind of stupid. Um, but uh, so I was just playing around with Pokemon like that. And I caught a, a pink... A pink stuffed bear and I kind of recognize him from Super Smash I believe he was a, a pokeball he comes out and he, like beats him up and uh, he was just a, a stuffed bear I he's pink I named him strawberry and he was really strong he's just a normal and fighting type so in my head I'm like all right that's kind of a lame typing uh, matchup eventually I'll take him out but he just was so strong and I, I really came attached to strawberry he eventually b evolved into a beware and um, I could never really get rid of Strawberry. He 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 grew a place in my heart, and um, I I did intend to swap him out with a cooler like typing combination like that. But I I can't get rid of Strawberry. He's too strong. He he's 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 so huggable. I I just love him. So he ended up staying on my party. 
Um, I also traded um, somebody on a roof in the, in the desert town. He wanted a cactus Pokemon, and I traded him, so I can't look up the name. But he uh, he gave me this uh, fairy, or was it psychic type? It's it's fairy. The final evolution is fairy and psychic type, and it was just this little hat, and I, I thought it was really charming. And it eventually evolved into a Hatterene, and uh, he she or he already had the uh, name Fringe. I wasn't a big fan of the name, but I and I guess I could go change it myself. But um, he was he grew up with the name Fringe, so I can't change his name. He he knows he knows it by Fringe. I also was given an egg at the like daycare equivalent. I don't think it, it levels up your Pokemon anymore. It's just specifically for breeding Pokemon. But they gave me an egg, and it was uh, a, a lizard that was electric and poison type. And I thought that was a unique uh, typing combination like that. So I'll stick with this uh, lizard. I ended up naming him Gex after the, the, the famous Gex platformer video game. I don't know. It's just kind of stupid. But um, I was so close to getting rid of Gex because Gex was just this baby lizard and uh, he was really weak like his uh, his moves kind of sucked and he would die really fast but then he evolved into Toxtricity and Gex is so strong like he has he has Toxic Overdrive Boom Burst and Poison Jab were his final moves when I, I finished playing the game and uh, he he uh, I don't know like his ability I noticed was punk rock so like his his voice moves are amplified and then I gave him like a magnet so his, his overdrive just does so much damage uh, I, I said Jack might be one of my strongest Pokemon. I think uh, Gex might also be up there in terms of uh, power. I really like Gex. For my last one, this was kind of a, a last edition. Um, oh, Ball Toy. So Ball Toy was the, the top Pokemon that I was using for a long time. Okay, this is coming back to me. And I, I leveled up a Spookaboo pretty high as well. And it said, oh, you need to have him hold an item and trade him. And I said, okay, well, I guess I can't use Spookaboo anymore, which sucks because I, I grew a great attachment to my Spookaboo. I named him Great Pumpkin after Charlie Brown. And so I got rid of those guys. So this guy was kind of a, a last minute addition to my team, but I, I ended up uh, enjoying him quite a lot. The uh, ground and ghost type, he eventually evolved. I can't remember the first version of him, but he's a Golurk. And um, I named him Alphonse after the full metal alchemist little brother, because he kind of looks like a, a golem as well. He kind of reminds me of the Disney's Atlantis, like the uh, design of the machinery that they use in Atlantis. So um, I wasn't sure what to name him, but I ended up going with Alphonse. I kind of wish I named him Iron Giant after I found out he could learn fly. This uh, um, giant uh, golem just flying in the air, kind of like Iron Giant, but nope, Alphonse, and that is what I, I came to learn him as. So yeah, that was my team. Um, not exactly the most rounded. I didn't like min-max stats or anything like that. I just caught him and used him. So I don't know. I, I kind of went with a more organic approach, and this is what my team ended up being, which I, I think I had a great time uh, building my team in this way, a lot more organically than preemptively planning what they're going, uh, what I'm going to use. And then I think uh, switching Pokemon out all the time kind of helped me with the over leveling problem. Like Pokemon, especially when they just give XP to all your teammates, no matter like if you don't use them, over leveling can be quite the problem in games like this. So I think switching them out kind of helped me keep me more in line with my opponent's Pokemon levels. Kind of gave it still more of a challenge. It was still uh not that challenging it was still pretty easy i don't think i ever wiped out but um it did kind of keep me in line kind of kept me on my toes if you will so each of these newer pokemon also has like a, a certain uh gimmick to it like um i i forget which generation but they added like the uh the, the fourth evolution um oh, what's it called uh, mega evolution. So the the whatever generation added mega evolution. I want to say sun and moon added like the Z type moves, which I thought was kind of dumb. It's just like an upgraded move. But um, this gimmick in this one is uh, oh Gigamax or something like that, and it makes your Pokemon really giant. And I was just oh, well, that's kind of lame. Like that's kind that seems kind of lazy to me. Um, but in practice, it actually works pretty well. Like you can only use them at power spots, so like gyms and things like that. And or, or special occasions like final bosses and uh, uh, occasions that are like a big deal. You can Gigamax your Pokemon, which turns them really, really giant. And then for certain Pokemon, it also changes their form. And I never really figured out how to do that. That's kind of, it's kind of embarrassing to say, but I never really figured out because I know my Flapple has a Gigamax form because I looked that up online, but I 
didn't really look up how to Gigamax. Um, he just turned really big, which I think is like, uh, Oh, shoot, I forget the name of it, but um, there's like two different forms. You can So you can turn your Pokemon really big, and then certain Pokemon turn really big, and also change form. Like, all the gym leaders had a Gigamax form to their Pokemon, which changes their forms. And um, it also makes, like, all your moves Z-type moves. So I thought that uh, it, it actually was kind of a cool system. Like, it was very hype just seeing these two giant Pokemon, like, go at it, like Godzilla like sizes and like they do these ultimate moves which are just like giant electricity blasts everywhere and i thought that was it, it was actually a really cool addition to this game um that uh i was originally kind of grumbling against no shinies unfortunately um i remember they lowered the shiny rate of the previous generations i'm not sure what the shiny rate in sword and shield are but i never encountered any shinies of any kind which kind of sucks because i i if i caught a shiny i would automatically use it like no matter what but nope no shinies so, which i thought was kind of funny i did like that i could play this game one-handed this makes me sound like one of the most laziest gamers ever like oh i can't game with two hands but like it was nice just being able to like uh take a drink or eat some food be on my phone if you will while i was also playing pokemon like um i at one time i also did uh donate plasma and i was just playing pokemon with one hand and it worked fine like no problems i also do have a very needy dog um, who likes to be scratched and pet and like play tug of war and stuff like that. So it was nice being able to um, play Pokemon while I was uh, playing with my dog as well, or just giving him a little bit of uh, ear scratchage. I'm sure he really enjoyed that, but I, I know it sounds so bad. It's just like, just play with your dog, like quit playing video games. But like, I, I don't know, I, I like with a game such as Pokemon where you don't need like 100% attention. Um, I did like being able to do something else while I also played Pokemon. The story was actually pretty good. I, I really like the uh, character development as you go along this game. Like, granted, you are the silent protagonist, so you're not going to be saying anything, but you do have a couple, like, different rivals that you battle throughout the way. Like, you obviously have your one that you start out with. That's that's kind of like your Gary, right? Except he's super nice. And um, I, his uh, older brother is, like, the, the champion that uh, is motivating him to progress. And then you also come across, like, a couple other gym leader challengers who also, like, this guy was endorsed by the president, and he's, he's really... Uh, motivated he, he's kind of like more of the the jerk character the encounter but then you also c come across like this uh goth chick who has all these fans and the fans kind of act like uh team rocket but they're not mean either i think they really um niced up the pokemon games in the last couple generations which i never really had much of a problem with and i i like that the rival is like your friend but also your rival and then heals up your pokemon and gives you tips and advice and stuff like that i don't really mind the uh the lack of a real jerk that just smell you later you know i i didn't mind the lack of that that most pe other people seem to have and then um so you uh c encounter these uh these trainers as you that are also competing in the gym challenge and then um i really like how their teams they they switch up their teams and they try out different pokemon and stuff like that it's not just scary and like the first encounter he has a pidgey and then the second is a pidgeotto and then a pidgeot and then, uh, i really like um like, uh, there, there's some degree of trial and error that the other champions have, and then they also go through their own, like, character arcs. I'm not gonna go through each one of them, uh, specifically, for lack of spoilers and, and, and time, I guess, but, um, they do, um, have their own, uh, character arcs, and they, they do, um, have some story progression there. I do like that you, uh, actually really get to meet all the gym leaders like they each have their own um like uh previous games you would encounter like oh this gym leader is at the lighthouse so you got to go to the lighthouse and she says cool i'll meet you at the gym and then you got to go to the gym i can chalk it up to better graphics as well but they each seem to have their own personalities and their own uh, uh, uh character designs i guess and you uh post game you do talk to all of them as well I don't know, it just, uh, it really made the world feel alive that, like, you were interacting with these characters, and they were interacting with you, and, like, you see them outside of the gyms. I don't know, it, I, I really like that, that, uh, uh, progression, that growth. Along that line, I do wish there was voice acting. Like, I'm gonna be saying this a lot, but the Pokemon Company is one of the largest video game companies in the world. Like, Pokemon is huge, and the fact that, uh, some of the things they won't progress on like i really wish there was voice acting to even make myself feel more immersed and i i i don't know they could just do so much but they they don't it's just text and i i wonder why 
they they skimp out on that kind of stuff. I, I doubt it's, well, it might be a budget thing, or maybe they're just lazy, but uh, I wonder if there's a specific reason that they stick to the text over the voice acting. They don't even do, like, the, the voice acted, like, the, uh, huh? what like they don't even say one-liners like that at, with the text it's just purely text so it kind of looks weird like you'll be reading and their mouse will be flapping up op uh open and close but like no words are coming out i don't know it's always kind of jarring for a newer game such as this but um they do make a couple baby steps you know the the visuals and the scenery i know um that like w that like flat tree in the open area was a. Uh, was complained about a lot when this game first came out, when this game was still in the discourse, but um, it, d it does look like a really good game. Like, you'll go to a town and there'll be like sprawling hills with villages and stuff like that in the background. Like, it looks really nice. I actually really enjoyed the, how visually it looks. Like, you'll get like Pokemon flying and the trees and like you'll get, uh, you'll go to this, uh, almost like a, a, a woodland fairy kind of town and there'll be like mushroom Pokemon sitting on the branches staring at you. It's really immersive and I really like the uh, visual design that they went with. It really makes the world feel just alive. Like this is a real Pokemon town. This is how Pokemon would, would live in this town. This is how trainers would act. Like, I don't know, it, it just feels like really well thought out. So the open world is kind of like the, they, they have these two open world sections where you can actually, what? You can freely uh, move the camera around? That's crazy. It's not just like a fixed camera. Um, and then depending on the day is like the type of Pokemon that appear in the, the wild grass. And then you can just freely move around and while I do enjoy the more linear approach from town to town, I, I think this is a good middle ground. Like, they, they have their routes, and then they also have two really big wild areas that I, I enjoyed, because it's like, oh, what Pokemon are going to be out in the wild today? And then you can also, like, uh, you, you collect these uh, Ws. I, I think they stand for Watts, or I don't know. But you can spend the Watts on, like, upgrading your bike, or buying, buying new items, and stuff like that. So it really gives you, like, a currency to collect as you're going around in the open world. And then you also have raids, and that's, like, four uh, trainers versus one, like, really big Pokemon. And then you have a chance to catch at the end, kind of like a Pokemon Go raid approach would be. And uh, I never really played around with the online, so I can't, uh, I can't talk on that, but I did a couple of raids with some CPUs, and that was kind of fun. I could see myself, like, if this was my only game to play, like, I, I'm a kid and I'm broke and I don't have a backlog or anything like that, I could see the uh, open world and the raid system really, uh, grabbing my attention for, I don't know, a couple of months at least. Like, it, it, I think it's a really smart uh, decision, a really smart design. Uh, I really like the, the raid because, like, it's a way to get rare Pokemon that you normally couldn't. And then it does give that, like, interaction. Like, if I had three other po uh, three other friends who also played Pokemon, I could see myself doing, like, raid uh, hopping with them. I think that'd be a really fun time. The music was also really good. There was a couple towns, like, you'd go to. Like, there's this uh, snowy village with, like, uh, you get, like, shimmering noises. And then you get, like, this... Uh, like this quick uh, strumming instrument and it really feels like you're like in France or something like that. When you're out in the wild they play like exotic music like dun 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 and like uh, I don't know it's, it's really good uh, music uh, like it's the type of music that I would listen to while I'm studying or just working. I'll probably listen to the soundtrack while I edit this video in fact. The, the song that left the most impression on me was the gym. Like, if you're going to a gym, they really set this up so, like, watching Pokemon battles is, like, a spectacle. Like, it's a sport. You're going to go see, like, a soccer match or something like that. Or football for you European friends. It's, like, a sports event. Like, you you uh, battle the gym in this huge stadium, and there's, like, spectators all around, like, cheering, like, ah! And the music just pumps me up whenever I'm, like, facing, like, the gym leader. It is like this, like, I don't know, like, ravey kind of music, but it really pumps me up. I think it really works for that kind of, like, stadium setting. There's, like, advertisements in the background. There's, like, like cameras going around, like, getting every angle. Like, it's a really big, like, sports event or something like that. And then when they're on their last Pokemon, like, the, the, the crowd starts cheering, like, ah, 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 and they're, like, it, it just... If you, it makes you really feel like an athlete. Like, it's a really big event, and I really like the, the music in that. The, the, so, the, uh, normally in uh, older Pokemon games, it's like the Elite Four, right? Like, you have to fight four really strong trainers, and then you face a champion. And, like, no, 
no stopping at the Pokemon Center beforehand or anything like that. Um, and it's really hard. You got to bring. I I would just bring like a ton of revives and like full restores and, and like potions and stuff like that. So I would heal my team after every fight anyway. So, but this approach is just like, hey, you fight one guy and then you can like just go back to the pokemon center and heal and then you find another guy and then um they were also characters that you've already fought previously like there was a couple uh gym leaders who came back with higher level pokemon or like you'd face like your rival and stuff like that so um the elite four was not nearly as much of a challenge as um older games but i kind of don't mind like i like the casual approach i wish there was a setting at the beginning and it's just like hey um are you an actual adept Pokemon player or are is your name Eric and you are you a super baby casual and you want your Pokemon healed after every match because I would much prefer that than having to fly back to the Pokemon Center or using my items or anything like that I like the casual approach but I can certainly understand why others wouldn't so I mean like I said it's a Pokemon company just give us options they did uh, at the very beginning of the game it's just like hey have you played a Pokemon game before do you know how to catch your Pokemon? And I, I said yes, but um, they, there was times when it would still like baby me, like, hey, this is a, uh, let's just stop at the Pokemon Center. This will heal up your Pokemon. And it's, and it's just like, hey, I already told you I, I have played other Pokemon games before. I'm not sure how much they baby you if you say no, and this is your first time, but they still kind of baby you when you say that uh, you have played it before. But yeah, just options, like just give us uh, more uh, difficulty settings, like for those pro players, that are like are way into Pokemon like it, it would be a really cool thing to say like hey I'm I want to play like hard difficulty or even you know what um that a uh, Nuzlocke challenge where you have to like catch whatever Pokemon you see and if they die then you have to release them into the wild just release like an actual Nuzlocke mode for those like pro players I would never use it I can tell you that much but like more options is never a bad thing and like Nuzlocke challenge let's say like if you're Pokemon faints and he like is actually gone forever make that an actual mode i think that'd be awesome and i don't think it'd be too hard to implement either but yeah um the the league was a little easy um the the champion did did kind of give me a run for the money and then there is a little bit of a, a post-game story thing after you beat the uh, league as well that that uh kind of gave me a little bit of trouble but like i said i never blacked out and had to run back to the pokemon center and start over not that never happened i i think the difficulty was just right for me just right enough to keep me like on my toes the the so i i talked about this just a second ago the uh post-game there is like a, just a little bit to do after the game. It's basically like go back to all the the gyms and face Dynamax Pokemon, and um, that is th the way to get your second legendary Pokemon. Um, but by the time I was getting to that point, I was like, okay, I think I'm ready to wrap this up. Um, obviously, there's lots of stuff to do after the game as well. Like you can do more raids, you can level up your Pokemon. But that's always the case for all the Pokemon games. I, I believe you can go back and challenge all the gym leaders as well. I'm, I never really tried that out. But um, lots to do. If you just want like a game to last you for months and months, I, I think you could get a lot of bang for your buck with this one. My experience playing through this was kind of wearing thin uh, after I beat the champion. I was kind of ready to wrap this adventure up. Um, that's why I'm probably not going to go for the uh, the expansion pack or anything like that. Um, at least not right now. I could see myself in a couple months like uh, if there was like a sale on the expansion pack. Yeah, fat chance, right? But um, I, th I think I would um, maybe be interested in the expansion pack after I play a couple other games and like uh, go into it as like a, a fresh experience. But I I'm a little Pokemon doubt right now. The uh, Pokemon itch has been scratched. I'm, I'm feeling pretty good. I I'm, I had a great time playing this game, and um, I know a lot of people are mad about the lack of uh, all the Pokemon being in this game. I, I heard a lot of uh, grumbles and complaints about this game, but it's a good Pokemon game. I enjoyed it. I had fun with it, and I, I realized this might be because how I decided to approach this particular game with the uh, more organic, casual approach, but... I had a fun time. I think I'm going to give this a 4 out of 5. It's a, it's a great game. Like, there are flaws. I think the Pokemon Company could do so much more to this franchise. Um, and it's frustrating when they don't. But um, what they have here, I think, is a great time. And if you're uh, any fan of a Pokemon game at all, like, if you have any... Uh, fond memories of it or anything like that i i think i would recommend this game to you it's it's done right or, or at least for my uh 
casual fan approach to this game. I think it's it's a great game. So what about you guys? Are you, you uh, big Pokemon fans? Like, what's your team? Have you played this game? Do you have a Ponita you can trade me? I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm probably not going to play this game again. So um, it, it would be uh, pointless to, to trade me because I probably wouldn't level it up or anything like that. But, um, like, let me know your experience playing this game or any past Pokemon games like that. What starters did you choose? Like, just let me know. I love hearing from you guys. Um, but as for me, I don't think I am the best there ever was. And I did not catch them all, but I had a great Pokemon experience nonetheless. So I will talk to you guys later. Bye!